Soundstripe. Hey y'all, Auntie Ashley at the Clinical Cookout here, and I am here to wrap up our themed week on anxiety. If you missed the content this week, it is really important to go back and watch as everyone experiences some level of anxiety, but we talked about just general anxiety, what is normal, what will be considered clinical, and we went over various anxiety disorders. So very informative, very educational. Please go back and watch the content from this week. But today is my turn to give y'all what I want to talk about in regards to anxiety. So as your friendly neighborhood therapist and one who works with couples primarily, I want to talk to y'all a little bit about relationship anxiety. So let's get into it. So first disclaimer, let me just say that although Mental health professionals are very aware of this type of anxiety, especially those of us who do work with couples. The DSM, or Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, does not include it. However, it is seen. So we give it a name and it's just not included there because it is very specific. With that being said, relationship anxiety is when a person experiences persistent doubt, fear, or worry in a relationship, and they may need constant reassurance or ignore their own needs and wishes to please a partner. Doctors refer to it as relationship anxiety or relationship-based anxiety. Relationship anxiety can also involve feelings of intense worry with our friend relationships as well. So not just romantic, but also close friendships. And unlike other forms of anxiety, such as generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, uh, doctors do not have specific guidelines to diagnose or treat relationship anxiety, but there's work being done in this area. And relationship anxiety encompasses some of the features of social anxiety disorder. More specifically, both of these conditions can cause a person to experience significant discomfort about rejection. Now, let me just say, there is a level of normal, what's considered normal anxiety within a relationship, and then there is this. Um, so although many people may have worries about acceptance and reciprocal feelings within their relationship, which can be considered normal, relationship anxiety tends to develop when a person experiences excessive, excessive fear or worry. And this is often attributed to our attachment style. So you see relationship anxiety more with people who have one of the insecure attachment styles. Now, real quick, our attachment styles are those bonds that are created from infancy until about five years old between our parent or primary caregiver based on how they nurture us. So you can have a secure attachment style or you can have one of the three insecure styles, which would be anxious, avoidant or disorganized, which is a mixture of anxious and avoidant or fearful. So let me give you just a little example. Normal anxiety might cause you to worry a little bit about the future of your relationship. Like, is this the person for me? How do I know? Those regular questions that we ask ourselves in a relationship, whether in the beginning or the middle. It's like, is this, is this legit? Is this who I need to be with? Is this my person? However, people with relationship anxiety may end the relationship out of sheer fear. There are no real issues, but they're so scared that they cannot create and maintain that intimate bond. Or they may endure the relationship, but with great anxiety that causes problems in the relationship. The effects of relationship anxiety truly do hinder a person's ability to function within relationships. Now, researchers describe three common symptoms of relationship anxiety, and they are excessive reassurance seeking, self-silencing, or partner accommodation. That first one, excessive reassurance seeking, is also common in social anxiety disorder and depression. And researchers suggest that excessive reassurance seeking is related to interpersonal dependency. So codependency, if you've ever heard that term. And that refers to a person's reliance on others for constant evaluation and acceptance. People who exhibit excessive reassurance seeking behavior may fear receiving a poor evaluation or not being accepted. So this is a person who cannot even take constructive feedback or criticism from their partner. Now, criticism in and of itself can be a major red flag. It's one of John Gottman's four horsemen that we want to keep out of a relationship. But constructive criticism is different. But people with this particular symptom cannot handle any type of 
negative or constructive feedback. Self-silencing is another symptom that is shared across many other health conditions, mental health conditions. And a study published in the Journal of Experimental and Social Psychology showed that women who are sensitive to rejection may be likely to engage in self-silencing to please their partner. People who self-silence may not express their tastes, opinions, or feelings to their partner, especially if their tastes, thoughts, feelings differ from their partners. People tend to engage in self-silencing behavior to appear similar to those whose acceptance they are seeking and in an attempt to prevent rejection. So basically, if you are self-silencing, that means you do not have a voice in the relationship. It's almost like if y'all remember on Coming to America where he asked her, what kind of food do you like? And she said, whatever food you like, that. Like, I don't have anything of my own because I want to make sure you like me and accept me. So I'm going to like what you like. And that's it. My personality is literally your personality. Now, one might think, well, the other the other partner who you like everything they like might love this. But research, in fact, shows that this has the potential to lower relationship satisfaction. And lastly, the third common symptom I listed was partner accommodation. And this is a response from the other partner towards the anxious partner. And it is a common effect observed in relationships where one or more people has obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And Auntie Suge talked about that on Monday. So go back and give that a look. Also, oftentimes the non-anxious partner in the relationship enables the anxious partner. So yes, they already have heightened anxiety within the relationship, but that other partner can do things and say things that heighten it, that make it worse. So of course, some common treatments for this particular type of anxiety would be couples therapy, getting in to see someone who can work with the both of you as there are two people in relationships, so both people need to understand and know what is going on. And in a study published in the journal Family Process, researchers tested the effectiveness of a single psychoeducational session. And that session focused on addressing the patterns of behavior associated with relationship anxiety, including the three symptoms that I mentioned. And researchers found that after one session, partners with relationship anxiety had decreased levels of reassurance seeking and self-silencing. The non-anxious partner also demonstrated lower levels of accommodation for the partner with anxiety. So a couple different types of couples therapy that you could try if this is if your partner is anxious or if you are the anxious partner and you recognize that this is, you know, harmful to your relationship. You could try behavioral couples therapy, cognitive behavioral conjoint therapy, or cognitive existential couples therapy. But since relationship anxiety shares very similar symptoms with other anxiety disorders, some doctors suggest working only with the partner with anxiety because for the most part, it is a you thing if you have the relationship anxiety. It is something that you need to unpack and work on. Um, and oftentimes, like me, I'm going to work on your attachment style and how that was created, your childhood, how you have been in other relationships in your life with your parents, grandparents, siblings, peers, um, all of that. So sometimes individual therapy is best when it is an individual issue because your partner is not always doing anything to cause you to be anxious. It is something that you are without any proof that you need to be. All right, y'all. That's all I got. I will holler at y'all later and make sure to stay tuned for our newest theme next week. Or wait, we might be live next week. I don't know. Y'all will find out. But anyway, I'll holler at y'all later. Have a beautiful, wonderful rest of the day. Hey.